Good evening, y'all. Yo, first and foremost, graduates, give yourselves a round of applause, please. Now, I know I'm one of the final things between you all and Sixth Street, so I'm going to keep this short. Okay, look, <clears throat> if you are sitting in these seats, you find yourselves in one of two buckets. The first bucket, you know exactly what you're going to do for the next 30 years. You know where you're gonna work, you know where you're gonna live, you know who you're gonna marry, you know how many kids, preferably twins, or you find yourself in the second bucket and you have no idea what you're doing next. Now, I'm going to be honest. Whichever bucket you find yourself in and whatever you think your life is going to look like, you're wrong. And I couldn't be more excited that you're wrong because life never looks anything like we plan it to look like. Many of you sitting in these seats will be working in a profession that doesn't exist yet. Many of you sitting in these seats will find a cure for disease that hasn't hit yet. Many of you sitting in these seats will solve a crisis that hasn't struck yet. And I can't wait to watch. At Texas, we say what starts here changes the world. But they never really told us how to change the world. So for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to give you all the three tips that you have to follow if you want to change the world. Now, tip number one, you got to delight in the detour. What do I mean? See, I was sitting in the first bucket. Ten years ago, I was in your seats. I graduated from Texas. I was drafted to the Cleveland Browns, and I was like, I'm going to play 10 years in the NFL, have a Hall of Fame career, go on to be a businessman and settle in Dallas, Texas. I tore my MCL my rookie year. That didn't happen. I ended up getting traded to the Philadelphia Eagles. Cleveland, Philadelphia, I still couldn't find either place on the map, but it was fine. So I'm in Philadelphia playing for the Eagles, and I go up to my coach's office. I'm trying to brown nose. Y'all know how y'all went to your TA's office during office hours? That's what I was doing. So I go up to my coach's office, and I'm trying to brown nose. But while I'm in his office, I look at the depth chart. What the depth chart is, is an order of where you fall on your team. So I look under my position group, linebackers. I don't see my name. I check again, linebackers. I don't see my name. Finally, I start to check other, other position groups. I still don't see my name. I scan to the bottom of the list and I find my name under the word cut. That means I was getting fired. Imagine going to your professor's office and you look under the grades of A, B, C, and D searching for your name, but instead you find your name under F. That's what happened to me. So I had to delight in the detour because I realized at that point in time, my life was going to take a drastic detour. I wasn't going to have this illustrious NFL, illustrious NFL career that I thought. But here's the beauty of a detour. See, a detour prepares you for your destiny while your destiny is being prepared for you. So many of y'all, you have these brilliant plans. Maybe you've already gotten a job in private equity. Maybe you've already gotten into law school. Maybe you've already gotten a job at a fantastic startup. Just understand, you might have to take a detour and that's okay because it's preparing you for your destiny. So now, it's 2016. 
I'm out of the NFL. I have broken my thumb. I have torn my quad. I have a sports hernia. I have torn my MCL and I've torn my other MCL. I'm in Austin. I'm in grad school. I'm unemployed. I email every news director in Austin, all the local stations, because I was trying to get a job, y'all. I got to change the world, right? I email every news director in Austin, and by, by the grace of God, one news director, Pam Vought from Fox 7 Austin, she responds. And that's how I get into TV. If you want to change the world, you got to delight in the detour. That's the first point. But if you want to change the world, the second point, you got to be illogical. So what is being illogical? Being illogical is believing that it is so, even when it's not so, so that it can be so. Okay, I'm going to tell you all a story. I'm going to tell you all a story. 1952, May 5th, no one had ever run a mile in under four minutes. Scientists thought it was physically impossible. If you were to run a mile in under four minutes, your heart would literally explode. That's what scientists suggested. But one man in Oxford, England, Roger Bannister, he was illogical. He said to himself, this can be done, even though it hasn't been done, and I'm going to make it happen. On May 6, 1952, for the first time in our history, a man ran a mile in under four minutes. That's what being illogical looked like then. But what does being illogical look like now? I was in Austin. I lived in Mueller. It's 2020. Shout out to my one person that lives in Mueller. <laughs> I was in Austin. I was in Mueller. It was 2020. George Floyd had just been murdered. I realized I had to do something. As a graduate of Texas, I had been empowered to speak. You all have been empowered to speak. So what did I do? I rented a studio space in Austin, Texas. I hired a wedding videographer, because I didn't have a video team. And my best friend, an Olympic gold medalist that graduated from Texas, stood in as my producer. I sit in this room and I answer four questions, trying to reconcile the racial divide in our country. Within five days, it had 25 million views. I was shocked. I get a call from a no-caller ID number. For whatever reason, I pick it up. Acho McConaughey speaking. I want to have a conversation. McConaughey? Like, like, like Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, man, I want to have a conversation. I was like, uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, m -m 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 I mean, I start stuttering. M -m -m McConaughey wants to have a conversation. We can do that. I said, okay, here here's what we're going to do, bro. Let's do it in four days. McConaughey says, let's do it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Academy Award winner wants to talk to you tomorrow, then we talk tomorrow. Now, here's the secret I haven't told the rest of the world, but I'm telling y'all. I shoot uncomfortable conversations in an all-white room. Problem, the studio was painted sky blue. It takes 24 hours to paint, 24 hours to dry. But how am I going to tell Matthew McConaughey that? I'm not. So we steal like a white sheet of paper from somewhere in Austin and we cheat the camera to make it look like I was in an all white room. We were in a sky blue room for the second episode. McConaughey and I record the second episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man. I end up partnering with Oprah. We write a book and it ends up being a bestseller, which leads to a quick aside. So many of you all are probably wondering, what in the world is my calling in life? To that I say this, your calling will call you. Just pick up. See, when I got called from that no caller ID number, I realized at that point in time, this is my calling. And while I don't advise picking up no caller ID numbers, it worked for me. That's all I'll say. Okay, so now, 
I've done an episode with McConaughey. I've partnered with Oprah Winfrey for Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. It's now February of 2021. I get a call from my television agent. He says, hey, um, Acho, I just got a call from the producers of The Bachelor. Um, you're going to need a host. Okay, our two Bachelor fans spoke up. I just got a call from the, uh, from the producers of The Bachelor. They want you to host their After the Final Rose episode. It's going to be viewed by 7 to 10 million people, but no pressure. Okay. So now I'm in Los Angeles. I'm hosting The Bachelor, and this was a six-hour shoot that was cut into 44 minutes. Don't tell them I told y'all. I think that was private information. So when you are illogical, you will end up in places you never imagined, doing things you never dream of, and opening doors that have never been opened. What I didn't tell you all about Roger Bannister, that man that ran the mile in under four minutes, the craziest part of the story, within the next two years, 10 people ran a mile in under four minutes because they saw one man do it, because one person chose to be illogical. Imagine the doors that you all will open for those that come after y'all when you all choose to be illogical. If you wanna change the world, you got to delight in the detour. You got to be illogical. But finally, if you want to change the world, you got to use your thing. July 9th, 2020, I get a call from Oprah Winfrey, another no caller ID number. I don't know why they do this. I got a call from Oprah Winfrey. I pick it up. You have the thing, my friend. You have the thing. And coming from someone who had the thing and has the thing, you, my friend, you have the thing. Well, what in the world is the thing? I didn't know I had it until just now. So now you got to tell me, Miss Oprah. She says, you have a unique ability to speak hard truths and people still want to listen to you. You all, by sitting in this audience, ready to be alumni of the University of Texas, you all each have the thing. But it's nothing to find the thing. What you have to do after you find your thing, because you all have it, you have to develop your thing. What is the thing? The thing is you, your natural ability to be great. Whatever you find a natural passion for, what do you naturally excel at? Because I promise you all have the thing, but you have to develop your thing. But I must tell you a secret. It's your development in private that leads to your praise in public. See, so many of you all are going to do phenomenal things, but understand it might not happen overnight. Hone your skills in private. Hone your skills in private. Roger Bannister, before he broke the four-minute mile, what he was doing was training privately. Remember in 2017, before I won the Emmy, before McConaughey called, before Oprah, I was working in Austin, Texas in private, and ultimately that might lead to public praise. Develop your thing in private and it will lead to your praise in public. However, if you find your thing and you develop your thing, it's irrelevant unless you use your thing. See, the third point, if you wanna change the world, you gotta use your thing, and each one of y'all have it. The author of Harry Potter wrote her first book at six, her first novel at 11. J.K. Rowling had the thing, but in 1990, when she penned Harry Potter, she had moved overseas, she had gotten married, had a child, and had not used her thing. Well, by the late 90s, when she publishes Harry Potter and uses her thing, the world as we know it is changed because children's literature changed because she decided to use her thing. The New York Times bestsellers list was altered. They had to create an entirely different version specifically for children because her books sought atop the list. 
pop culture and literature became synonymous. See, by using your thing, you can change the world. In 2017, I was at Texas getting my master's degree. Dr. Bart, are you here? And if so, can you stand? Dr. Bart. Thank you, sir. I was getting my master's degree under the tutelage of Dr. Bart, and I had to write one final paper in order to get my degree. He said, write it on anything that pertains to the mind. Well, I had failed at so many goals trying to play in the National Football League, amongst others, that I committed my final paper to the ideology that goals are dumb. Truly, sorry professors, but goals are dumb. I said this, a goal is an end towards which energy is aimed, but why would I start something with the end in mind? Instead of setting goals, I committed to believing in an objective with no limitations. An objective is simply energy aimed in a direction. I believe that a goal in life is the simplest way to fail. If you set a goal, at best, you limit your achievement, but at worst, you might ruin your self-esteem and self-efficacy. So it was on that day I wrote this paper. Well, this paper in 2021 turned into the cornerstone for this book, my latest book with Oprah. So this paper, which started at the University of Texas in Austin, turned into chapter 11 of this book. And I said, what starts here literally changed my world. And after partnering with Oprah on that book, has the potential to change the world. I hope you all fervently believe what starts here genuinely changes the world. Class of 2022. Man, I'm so incredibly proud of y'all. You all endured a global pandemic. You all endured racial tension that this country has not seen in years. And now, you all have endured my commencement speech. <laughs> Clap for yourself for that one. Giving you all my verbal appreciation is simply not enough. You all are too incredible. So instead, I'm giving every student a copy of my book. When you all leave the exits, there will be copies waiting for you all because you all are incredible. Class of 2022, you all have started here, but now it's time to go change the world. Welcome. Thank you, class of 2022.